Hello, okay, so I'm back uh, with a follow-up on this video. A couple days ago, published this, will your NFT images last forever? And uh, if you've watched this, you already know that this is kind of a walkthrough to find out where your image metadata is stored when you buy into an NFT project. But for this video, I only went into verified contracts. So if they were verified on Etherscan, then you have kind of these really nice uh, buttons and UI for you to then explore um, the contract. So uh, John Nicholas III um, commented, and we had a quick little YouTube conversation here. Uh, he asked, do you have any recommendations for a guide? Let me make this bigger. Do you have any recommendations for a guide that walks someone through the process of inspecting a non-verified, no checkmark ERC-721 contract? And um, I said, okay, I can look into this. It, I think it involves decompiling the bytecode and then writing a script. Um, okay, cool, would really appreciate this. So that's pretty much what I did. Um, I have uh, in my GitHub, I should probably navigate directly to that real quick. Um, where is it, where is it? Query contract is the most recent one that I made. I put together this um, the script that you can actually just download, uh, install the dependencies and then run. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, but basically, uh, John had a specific question about an NFT that was minted in May 2018. It's the first licensed Marvel NFT ever created. I'm attempting to determine how the NFT image is being hosted. The company that minted it doesn't seem to be particularly active these days and has not responded to any of my attempts to find out where the JPEG is uh, stored. And uh, so yeah, let's let's just get into it. Okay, so. I might want to open my Twitter real quick because he sent me some details there. All right, so uh, here's the OpenSea page for the NFT I purchased. Okay, so he showed me this OpenSea link, right? And I thought, wow, okay, this is pretty cool. Deadpool poster. Um, and it's pretty insane that this was actually created two years ago. Like that's, that's like way back there. Um, and it was recently purchased for 1.36 ether. That's a, that's a lot of ether, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, but okay, cool. So what I did here, and let me just dig into the code, um, is it's a pretty simple script. Um, the main thing here is I wanna be able to get access to this contract and then I can call functions on the contract by, um, I can call functions on the contract, such as get me the name of the contract and get me the token URI. And uh, and then I use uh, Alchemy as my provider to kind of access the blockchain. And then this is that key line in there that's like um, using Ethers.js to get access to the contract using the contract address, the ABI, and then the Alchemy uh, node provider. Um, so the cool learning of this video was like how ABIs kind of work on, on some level. Um, so let me show you, let me, let me go through chronologically real quick. I apologize if this is kind of a rambly video. So we go to details. Nice thing about OpenSea is they show you this contract address. So you can click on the contract address. It takes you to Etherscan. Most NFT projects these days will have a verified contract because uh, it just makes you seem more legit if you have one. Uh, but this one doesn't, it's kind of like older days one, you know, it's like, doesn't have much activity until recently. But if you click on contract, then you can see it's just like bytecode right and so that's actually not very useful to us because we don't know how to get um we don't know how to query this contract to find out where the uh, token metadata is stored so i found this website um let me look through my notes here i found this website uh where is it where is it ether ethervm.io slash decompile and this is pretty cool because what you can do is you can paste in this um, contract address. Let me just copy address the clipboard. And uh, you paste in the address here. And then I know that it's on the live network. So I'm gonna be looking at that one. And I press decompile and it actually shows you uh, the the method names that it can, de it can find. Um, so this is like, an ERC-721 contract, which OpenSea did already say that this was ERC-721, but you can also see from a lot of these functions, uh, it follows the standard and because it has like the standard balance of function, owner of function, uh, token by index, total supply, yada, 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 right? So the key thing that we want here is the token URI. And in my script here, 
uh, or have this minimized, but when you install it, you'll see, um, I don't have, I only have uh, this name function defined in the interface, as well as the uh, token UI function defined. And so what, what I'm doing there is I'm saying, okay, there's a token UI function that looks like that, all right? And then there's also the name function. And I'm ignoring all these other functions because I don't really care about them. So I have them in here. And then uh, because I passed this contract ABI um, JSON object into uh, this contract initialization in Ethers.js, when I do that, this contract variable that I've initialized now is the contract, but it also knows about the name and the token URI functions. So that's kind of how it connects. So anyways, just wanted to explain how this works. Uh, when you use it in your project, you basically just have to copy your .env dash placeholder into a .env and then uh, install the dependencies, uh, tweak these so that you use your own Alchemy API URL, your own uh, API key, the contract address that you want to look for and the token ID. And then, um, and then you should be able to run it. So when you run it, uh, this is kind of the output that it looks like, but let's just clear this. And if you run it, npx hardhat run interact JS, it'll take like a second or two, and then you'll get the name of the contract and the token URI. So this is what it was interesting. A lot of projects, you know, don't, don't store their uh, information on chain. They'll store it in IPFS or Rweave or something like that that's decentralized. But then there are a lot of projects that also just store it in their own private server, which is kind of what's going on here. This is a GFT authentic API Heroku app. So I click on that. It actually takes you to this page that has an application error. And it's kind of sad because uh, this means that the website's basically not returning uh, an image. Um, but then I was like, okay, well, it's weird because this doesn't return an image, but this page does on OpenSea. So I was like, okay, how does OpenSea get it, right? And I thought, I realized um, OpenSea actually has an API and this API allows you to query them, like basically ask them for the information that they have about your NFTs. So I looked at the asset object. Um, oh, that's just the object. Where is the API? Retrieving assets API. And um, make my face smaller here. The uh, retrieving assets API, you can query by the address of the owner of the assets. Um, so over here, I'm actually gonna try to query by uh, this person's uh, John, or sorry, Jason, I'm sorry, John, uh, John's address, I believe. And so I'm gonna query that. And then I'm also gonna get that contract um, address again, which is this one. So I'm gonna copy that and put that into the asset contract address. And then I also want token ID one. You don't, I don't think you need to fill in all these, really only any one box will do. Um, but then over here on this, on this side, you can hit try it and then it'll actually query that token ID or that token information. So you can see here, it's the Deadpool 2 Star Wars, which matches this NFT name, Deadpool 2 Star Wars. So I know I'm on the right response, but what's interesting is you look at the image URL, the image preview URL, the image uh, original URL, this is actually stored in an AWS um, server somewhere. So I'm assuming if I copy this over into my browser, I'll be able to get the image. And then boom, I actually do get the image. And that's pretty cool. I wonder if I can, oh, I can zoom in. It's, there's some pretty good resolution on this. Looks like a little oil painting that got digitized. So that's awesome. Um, but then uh, it's just sad that the smart contract doesn't actually have a reference to it. So somehow OpenSea is managing all of this. So OpenSea, in my eyes, is kind of like the real maintainer and owner of this NFT art. Uh, the smart contract is kind of like a dead end. It's not really connected anymore to that to this image, um, which is sad. But um, you know, it is what it is. It's still there. People can still enjoy it. I also can go to rainbow.me slash. Um, I believe it was this address and then see it on John's wallet. So that's cool. It shows up in all the places that it needs to show up. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's useful. If it is, let me know. It's kind of a niche thing, but yeah, enjoy.